In this video, we're going to talk about medullary lesions. So lesions that occur in the medulla oblongata and how they present clinically. At this point, before discussing these clinical cases, it is important to introduce the rules of fours of the brainstem. So the rules of four, as the name suggests, there are four rules. And within each of these rules, it is all related to four, basically. So the first rule of the rules of four is that there are four structures in the midline of the brainstem beginning with M. And these are the motor pathways or the cortical spinal tract, which passes the midline, the medial lemniscus, the medial longitudinal fasciculus and the pathway, as well as the motor nuclei and cranial nerves, which are also located the nuclei in the midline. The second rule of the rule of fours is that there are four structures to the side or lateral, beginning with S, so S for sides. And these structures are the spinocerebellar pathway, the spinothalamic pathway, the sensory nuclei of the fifth cranial nerve are located laterally, as well as the sympathetic pathway. The third rule of the rule of fours is that there are four cranial nerves in the medulla, which is the bottom part of the brainstem. There are four cranial nerves in the pons and four cranial nerves above the pons, two in the midbrain and two above. So again, above the pons, there are cranial nerves one, two, three, and four. Cranial nerves three and cranial nerves four are within the midbrain. In the pons, there are cranial nerves 5, 6, 7, and 8. And in the medulla, there are cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, 12. The last rule, the fourth rule of the uh, rule of fours, is that the four cranial nerve nuclei that are in the midline can be easily remembered by being divisible or that can divide equally into 12 except one and two. So the four cranial nerves I'm talking about that are in the midline and divide equally into 12 include cranial nerves three, cranial nerves four, six, and 12. Cranial nerves five, seven, nine, and 11 are in the lateral aspects of the brainstem. What makes this even more interesting is that the cranial nerves at the midline so 3, 4, 6, and 12 are all motor nerves. Now, to try to understand the rules of four for the brainstem, let's work through some examples focusing on lesions that occur in the medulla oblongata. The first case is an elderly woman that presents with sudden right-sided Horner syndrome. So ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis on the right side. With left-sided loss of pain and temperature sensation below the neck, in the arms and the legs, with associated difficulty swallowing. But the elderly woman has loss of sensation to the right side of the face. The patient also complains of vertigo, nausea, and vomiting. There is no limb weakness noted by the patient. These signs and symptoms are caused by an injury to the lateral aspect of the medulla, usually as a result of an infarction of the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. This causes what is called Wallenberg syndrome, also known as lateral medullary syndrome. And in this case, the lesion is on the lateral aspect of the medulla, and in this case, the lesion is on the right lateral aspect of the medulla. And so, looking at it in a bit more detail, when you have 
the lesion on the lateral aspect on the right side, you can see the structures that are involved. Firstly, you have involvement of the sympathetic fibers on the right side, which will result in ipsilateral Horner's syndrome. So, Horner's syndrome on the same side. Involvement of the lateral spinothalamic tract results in contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation below the neck. Involvement of the inferior cerebellar peduncle will result in the ataxia. The difficulty swallowing is due to involvement of the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerve at the medulla oblongata level. Now please note that this patient has no limb weakness and this is because the motor fibers, the corticospinal tract is in the medial aspect of the medulla, not the lateral. And also note that this patient has no loss of basic touch and vibration below the neck. And this is because the medial lemniscal tract runs in the medial aspect of the medulla. But to make this a bit more complicated, some of the cranial nerve nuclei from the pons, which is above, naturally extends down to the medulla level. So involvement of the inferior vestibular nucleus will cause vertigo, nausea and vomiting. Involvement of the spinal aspect of the trigeminal nerve causes ipsilateral loss of sensation to the face. So loss of sensation to the right side of the face. The trigeminal nerve, if you recall, is important for sensation of the face. The second case to look at is of an elderly man who presents with sudden left-sided weakness of his body. And on examination, you also notice that this person has tongue deviation to the right side, and you find that there is a decrease in his vibration and touch sensation on the left side as well. Now, these signs and symptoms are caused by an injury to the medial aspect of the medulla, which affects also the hypoglossal nerve and nuclei, cranial nerve, you know, 12. This syndrome is called Dejerine syndrome or medial medullary syndrome, and it is caused by an occlusion of the small perforating branches, the blood vessels originating from the vertebral or proximal basal arteries, or occlusion of the anterior spinal artery as well. Now in this case, the lesion is on the right side, the right medial aspect of the medulla. Now when you have a lesion here, or an infarct here, these structures are involved. So involvement of the right motor pyramidal tract which results in your contralateral opposite side paralysis weakness of the upper and lower limbs of the body. So on the left side, you will have involvement of the hypoglossal nerve fibers on the right side, which results in tongue deviation to the affected side. So to the right side, you'll have involvement of the right medial lemniscal tract, which results in contralateral decrease in sensation for vibration and fine touch. Now, I hope all those two cases make sense, but it's good to appreciate the rules of four of the brainstem and how you can apply it to the clinical picture. So in summary, we discussed the rules of four and the clinical relevant cases of Wallenberg syndrome, also known as lateral medullary syndrome, and Dijerine syndrome, also known as medial medullary syndrome. Thank you for watching.